Hey guys, this is Travis with Beyond Bipolar blog. Today we're going to talk about relationships and regret. Now for most people, everyone experiences different things when it comes to relationships. Some are good, some are bad, some are in between. But for you, I'm just going to discuss with you one of my best relationships. Now I know for me there was some really bad ones, but today I want to talk about the good one. Or my favorite one is primarily because I've been thinking about her lately. I've actually wrote a huge paragraph on her about a day ago or even as close as 12 hours ago. In fact, I was thinking about her. I had the biggest regret. I had to let her go, but there's a reason why she's my ex and I might as well dive into it. For the most part. Your mental health will actually define how well the relationship will go. If you're having mental instabilities, it's definitely going to affect your relationship. However, at this time in 2016, I was doing pretty well mentally and I was able to let go of it pretty mentally well. But in the long run, it, it's one of the relationships that I have the most regret regarding having to let her go. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the show on TLC called 90 Day Fiance. Well, I was jokingly putting on Facebook that there was this guy and girl who ended up getting together and I was looking for a girl from Korea so I can be an, become an actor on TLC's 90 Day Fiance and people were laughing about it. That was two days ago and then a day ago I was posting about my ex her name was joanne i met her on korean cupid sometime in march i've only it was one of those tlc moments where you have 90 days to marry someone i'll say to go back to the home country so reality is i went to international dating at the time i was pretty lonely and I was regretting the fact that I didn't have anyone to share my life with. At the time, I really cared about being with someone. I didn't care who or what it was. At the time, I just felt like I needed to be one in order to keep myself mentally happy. Now, in the long run, this is actually really bad for you. You don't want to use or put relationships on a pedestal when it comes to your mental health because if things go wrong, it'll really affect your mental health. And this can become very toxic. And so you got to be very wary about the relationships you choose and those that you choose to put a barrier around or at least have some boundaries around. Anyways, I met this girl in March. Her name was Joanne. I met her on Korean Cupid. And then a month later, I ended up paying her plane ticket to come here to Minnesota. And the fact is, I actually didn't know what she looked like maybe three to two days prior to her coming here is one of the most nerve-wracking things I've ever done because I honestly had no idea what she looked like. But in the end, I'm going to share some photos with you of her and me and some photos of her just in the video here. Anyways, she ended up being very pretty, more prettier, actually one of the most prettier relationships or the prettiest girl that I've actually ever had a relationship with. Things were smooth when she got here, but things progressively got very unstable. The relationship with my brother, since we're identical twins, we had a very close relationship. And regardless, when a relationship is involved, whether it's Kyle or me, he is my identical twin brother. It has a f tendency to affect the dynamics here, and that definitely happened. Now, you would think that her English which was okay at best. You think that would be the defining reason why things didn't work well, but that is only partially the reason. The reason why things didn't go well is because when she moved in, she took it like it was her place. Now, for people that are on disability or live in a single place apartment, I live with my dad, so there was a room that was provided for her, but I had shared a room with my brother and the fact that I involved the girl in there he ended up giving pushback to my sister's room and all his clothes ended up going to my sister's room and he lost a lot of space and that got him really ticked off not only that it's worth to mention he brought his girlfriend of unrequited love he didn't really care much about her 
He didn't really love her, but at the time, her, his girlfriend, and my girlfriend butted heads a lot because they just had two different ideals and perspectives regarding lifestyle. Be wary, guys. I'm a guy that has always focused on passions, that always focus on hobbies, art, music, things that really don't provide financial stability. So I choose to be on disability. I don't choose to be bipolar, but I do cho choose to have life choices. Like I said, I live on disability. I live with my dad. I live in a, a house that is relatively with other people. I don't live independently on my own. At, this t at that time, I didn't have a job. And things like this can really affect your relationship. Now, the truth is I wanted to marry her right away. I wanted to get the three months or the 90 day fiance thing out and about and marry her after those three months, but it ended up being cut short to two months, primarily because my parents convinced me to not marry her, but that is only partially the reason. I don't blame them for me not marrying her. It was actually my own personal choice. Like I said, I was in a lifestyle that really wasn't cooperating with a long-term relationship someone that I married to it would best to have a full-time job be independent she wanted to probably wanted a kid so she was 10 years my senior at the time I was 29 she was 39 lo and behold a year later when we separated she ended up getting pregnant had a kid and met someone else and got married then but anyways long story short is that if you are in a relationship and you are mentally stable that is only partially the thing that will make it work to make it work, you got to understand the dynamics in the house that you're in. For me, living with your dad, your brother, who you're really close to and having passions or hobbies that don't really pay or allow you to have a living and you're reluctant to get a full-time job, you have a tendency to sleep in 12 hours a time. Things like that can be very difficult. In reality, though, if I look back on it, my biggest regret is the fact that I couldn't make things work. However, I knew deep down from the beginning that it probably would not work out because of the situation that I described earlier, which is the fact I live with my dad, no job, close connection with my brother, focus on hobbies, passions, art, music, things like that. So the thing that I learned from that, that is that everyone who is bipolar, everyone who has mental health still makes choices, regardless of whether you're you have an unstable relationship with someone or a stable relationship with someone, my advice for you is to incorporate everything into your lifestyle, the pros and cons. You not only have to think about your mental health, but the living situation you're in, the financial situation in, and sometimes even spiritual situation in. People with bipolar disorder have very high divorce rates, and it can be very toxic being with someone who also has bipolar disorder or schizophrenia or any other type of mental illness like major depression for me she didn't really have a mental illness but the fact that I always butted heads with my brother because it was changing the dynamics with things I was always close to him he got things moved his own property moved from the place that he always lived in that's the reason why I didn't th things didn't work out but in a nutshell things could have worked out it didn't matter if my mom and dad weren't witnesses it didn't matter if they tell me to say no Deep down, I had to let her go because situationally wise, I wasn't willing to change. And like for those that have mental health issues, those that don't want to change, it's going to affect your relationship. So my advice for you is number one, focus on your mental health. Number two, focus on your financial situation. Then three, then you can focus on a relationship. When you get lonely, I've done really stupid things and I'll get to that later, but I just spent a lot of money on like catfishes out there, especially Chinese women that were actually not women who they say they were to be. But anyways, I'll dive deep that in another chapter and I'll dive deep into a, one of the most toxic relationships I've ever been. And this is just focus on the one that I really liked and the one that I had the most regretted and the one that I cared most about and loved, the one that I missed most. Anyways, like I said, if you're in a relationship, first focus on your mental health. That's so critical because if you're not focused on your mental health, that's really going to destroy the relationship you're in. If you're not financially stable, that could also force things into out of commission type things. And number three, 
You got to think about the relationship itself. You do not know if you're going to get well together with, you don't know if you have the same hobbies, the same connection, the same interests, the same love interests, for instance. You may on be two different grounds here. It could be unrequited, it could be or unrequited, it can be something that you really care about, it can be intense, it could be like borderline type attachment, high attachment, low attachment, flight, and things like that. So, for me, if I had to take things into situation, my mental health was good, but I was not living independently, and that's what threw everything off. However, like I said, I wasn't willing to work on my own. I wasn't willing to work 40 hours a week, and I wasn't willing to live in my own apartment. If I had these two things and I was willing to give up my passions, which is primarily the reason why I choose to live with my dad, it may be mental health par partially, but in the end, it's primarily because I want to focus on my passions, video producing, Composing music, playing piano, doing professional art is not enough to survive out there. And I know there's people out there that are independent. However, they only allow single place environments where you can't allow a couple retreat into a home. Many of these low appropriate homes that you pay maybe 30% of your income is something that isn't probably the best thing for someone when you want to involve a relationship not only that if they want to have kids or a future or a marriage or things like that i was ideally in not the right situation so i knew i had to let things go it just really really sucked because i think about her all the time especially now since i ended up writing a huge paragraph on her and that 90 day fiance thing that i ended up watching on tv recently now for me, she's very beautiful. For me, I'm not the most attractive guy, but she was my favorite. I was the most attracted to her. I like the fact that she was Korean. She spoke Korean and English. I guess I have this fancy or this fantasy uh, fairy tale where if she spoke English and Korean, it would force me to learn Korean. And since she was my love interest, I could use her as a translator. It sounds really bad to use people like that, but I figured if I love someone enough, she would be able to make that connection with my birth family. Since I recently reached out to my Korean birth family, especially my mom, I wanted to make a deep connection with her before she passes away. And I figured the easiest way is to find a girlfriend that speaks Korean and someone that I can share some commonality, like at least some spoken English. Things like that. So that, I guess, is my desire and why things dived into the way it dived into. And regarding mental health, yes, there's regret, but my mental health was actually pretty stable. There were times where she felt like she was really needy. I needed my space, but overall, it was pretty good. I want you guys to know that I've been through some experience that triggered less drama previously. When, the medi when I was not on medication, that was one of the worst times I've had in a relationship. But however, she was the one that knew me best at my worst. So in a reality, though I was not attracted to her, she probably deserved me at my best. Because she was there for me during tough times. Another thing you guys have to realize, if you ever go on medications, you ever change yourself, you got to do it for you. You cannot do it for someone. You have to make that decision that you want to do things for yourself. Because if you do things for yourself... You're willing to take that responsibility if things go to go to hell. For instance, you cannot put the responsibility on someone like say, I'm going on medications for you. I'm going on medications to be in a relationship. Yeah, that seems ideal. But in the end, if things go wrong, you're going to blame this person. You ain't going to take responsibility. My biggest mistake was bidding $1,000 to my best friend at the time. Now ex-best friend, ex-girlfriend where I was going to pay her a thousand dollars for her to quit smoking. I never put that through and then we lost connection because primarily I didn't want to be there if she gets cancer and smoked herself to death. So the reality is like her, she cannot put it on money. She can't put it on me. I can't put it on the next relationship. I can't put it on friends, family. If I want to make a change for my mental health, I got to make that decision like you. My best advice for you, if you go into a relationship, First, focus on your mental health and don't put the blame on someone. Take initiative to take your own responsibility to get well. Don't put that on someone else and blame them if things do not go well. The best thing you can do for yourself is things fail is 
to take responsibility for that failure and get up again, take that next step like I said in previous videos. If you have the desire, the determination, you're likely to make things to work better. And in the end, what's the thing that I learned most about this relationship? What is the thing that I regret most? My biggest regret, like I said, is letting her go. But I knew it had to come that way because I knew I had other life choices that I had that were better priorities for me or priorities that I thought were more important to me, which is being able to focus on my creative hobbies and focus less on being independent, meaning having a full-time job, having a, my own apartment, living on my own. Yeah, if I had those things, I was willing to work full-time and I was willing to be independent despite my mental health, I couldn't make things work easily. But essentially, I had other reasons. Like people who go to their candy like drugs, they have other reasons on why they don't quit. Yet, I wasn't at that stage where I could just give up the things that I really care about. I couldn't give up the things I do with my brother since we collaborate on a lot of creative things like music videos, like our own channels that we do. We are very, very close and I wasn't living, willing to live outside my dad's house and he's going to give us the house. So in reality, though I had some money, I was living on disability at the time, I felt it wasn't enough to keep the relationship secure. We would have sex two to three times a day and I was progressively getting weary of getting her pregnant and that would put another financial burden on me. So yes, my parents told me to not marry her. Yes, she was my favorite girlfriend. Yes, I was deeply attracted to her. Yes, I deeply was in love with her. Yes, my mental health was something that I was able to deal with. But at the time, I wasn't living independent. I wasn't working full time. And I had my other priorities like passions, like music and art. So, what I get, what I want you guys to take away from this, focus on your mental health, number one. Number two, don't blame others if things go wrong. Take responsibility and things should go right. Number three, if you focus on your mental health, you can focus on your financial health and then the compatibility issues. That can trigger a lot of drama and you need to have boundaries. So this is it in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed my insight regarding my best relationship, my best ex. I hope I provide you some information, insight when it comes to your own future relationships. Right now, you'll be seeing, well, you, you've you already been seeing pictures and you'll see me working out today. I hope you guys enjoyed this little conversation I've had. If you have any questions or concerns, please comment below. I post advice, experiences, good and bad, and other creative endeavors regarding bipolar and mental health. If you want to like, comment, and subscribe, that'd be great for Beyond Bipolar Blog. I have a Facebook link and Twitter link included in the description below. Please hit the bell button to see my future videos. Make sure to go to the subscription status on the YouTube tab below to see my videos pop up. They usually don't show up in recommended videos, but I'm hoping that it can make this channel excel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Anyways, have a good one. Take care. Bye.